Good afternoon and welcome to examiner.com Studio SX Suite. My name is Whitney Francis from examiner.com and today I'm joined by Martin Atkins. Martin has started off as a drummer, bands like Public Image Limited, Ministry, Pig Face, Nine Inch Nails. Uh, you've done just about everything that one can do in the music industry. You've been a tour manager, a set designer, filmmaker, uh, owns your own record label. Uh, and recording have traveled, studio. Yes, recording studio. Traveled all over the world <laughs> now with your new book, Tour Smart. Welcome. Thank you. So let's just dive right in. What, why is touring still important? With so much music on the internet, why is it even relevant? I think that it's, it's, the, last, um, it's the last way for a band to, to do two things. Push themselves, their brand, their band, and at the same time do market research. Right, so I think that when anything becomes um, widely adopted, if you're trying to break new ground, you have to move away from the thing, the platform that's been widely adopted with the internet. Great, post information there, but you have to go and meet people face to face and create a deeper connection. Politicians know this stuff. You know, Hillary Clinton, Obama didn't just launch his MySpace campaign and sit back and well, let's watch the numbers come in. He, they, these politicians go on the road until they can't talk anymore. Right. Um, touching people, not always in a good way, but, but, <laughs> but touching people and, 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 and meshing with them. The market research side of it is, is really simple. You play your songs that you think are good, uh, here comes the amazing ballad. When people run from the venue screaming, maybe that ballad isn't very good, you know? And you get used to talking to people being nice, uh, practicing all the other things you need to do as a, as a touring musician, selling something, which is um, to present all of your wares to people and, and, and make that long-term connection. And the function of, of merchandise works better face-to-face, -face, right. you know? So if, if you're a, a hometown band, you're just starting out, when do you make the decision to tour? How do you start the process of planning out your tour? Things of that nature. Well, you, I don't think you make a decision to tour because if bands do that, then they make a decision to tour America. No, tour within a hundred mile radius, 50 mile radius at first. Um, uh, keep it local, but don't keep playing the same city all the time. That's another thing bands do. They, they play their local market too much. They ask their friends, are we playing too much? And your friends will say, no. But that's their job as your friends. So start playing in, in an increasingly uh, larger uh, radius. Um, and then you can incentivize those fans to come in for a show in your, in your hometown market, maybe. Um, and then look at cities that have a scene that resonates with the kind of music you're making. Investigate other bands that are playing there, other venues, and go and open up for one of those bands. Right. Be first on a five band bill meet those people, network with them, and the thing that you have to trade them is that they could come and play to your hometown audience in Austin because you spent a year building it up, not playing too much, so it's still an event when you play, doing right. cool merchandise, having a range of products. And now you've, now you've gone to another city, you haven't made a horrible catastrophe of it, and you're, now there's two cities that you do well in. Right? So you, you just keep doing that, building it. It takes a long time. It takes an awfully long time. So if a, if a band on their tour has come to Austin for South by Southwest, and they think, mm -hmm. we're here, we're playing three shows, we're going to get signed, are they living in reality? Well, it, this is well, of course, no. I mean, why would you want to get signed? You look at the math of, of selling your own albums. $10 goes in your pocket <clears throat> versus signing to any other label. No dollars goes in right. your pocket, you know which is now on fire because you signed to a label. Um, uh, it, it, I started my own label in 1988. Mm -hmm. uh, the punk thing I was involved in, everybody started their own labels in 1970-something. Why bands still need the validation of signing to a label, I understand. But man, come on. You know, you don't need a label. Um, and you just have to look at Look at the evidence. Uh, you know, there are 6,000 bands performing at South by Southwest. Right. 
the chances of you getting signed are zero is, is uh, optimistic, <laughs> you know? Um, what South by Southwest is for is, is meeting people and networking and right. going, you know, going to see other bands and go, wow, I'm not going to do that <laughs> with a guitar. That looks ridiculous. And uh, wow, oh, I'm going to steal that idea. You know, I'm going to meet some people, meet some Chinese bands and network and help them. You know, I think if bands <clears throat> practiced something I call selfish philanthropy, mm-hmm. and yeah, come and play and do a few shows, but wander around with strings, drumsticks, pieces of equipment, help other bands, have a sandwich, you know, build some bridges. That's what South by Southwest is for, building bridges. Right. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of bands, but it, it's not with a view to signing them, it's just with a view to hanging out and, and making more friends and, and feeling good. So if a band is here, how can they make the most of this time at South by Southwest? What are they doing during the day when they're not playing shows? Are they playing shows during the day? Or are they just playing at night? Well, you mentioned a band early, the Jap- Jap- Japan Droids, yeah. Exactly. Uh, Japan Droids, they're doing 15, 15 shows. 15 shows, yeah. It's, so it, it, that's the new era, the workload. I mean, I, I did four lectures in New Orleans mm-hmm. on Monday, then we drove, whatever. The, the workload, you know, if, if bands are coming to South by to do one show, that's insane. Right. right? These guys just did 15 shows, and now we're, you, you're mentioning right. them in your thing, and now we're mentioning them here. Um, I've forgotten your question. <laughs> so what, what is the best thing a band can do here at South oh, by? The, well, I don't want to sound like a 50-year-old father of four, <laughs> which I am. Uh, I've been sober for a long time. Don't, just don't come here to drink, to drink, to drink and puke. Right. You could do that at home. <laughs> you know? um, just, just do as much as you can. And as a band, go all over the place. Uh, there's some bands came over from Norway last year and they, they hadn't done any promotion for their events I'm like, do a flyer right. and it wasn't about the design of the flyer which they got wrapped up in and there was a problem about it was about having a flyer to walk around the street going, hey we're from Norway we're, you know you don't know how we sound but we're on the street making eye contact right. talking to people practice those skills here practice the skill of not sleeping that's no. a skill you know um, <laughs> That's what South By is for. That's what bands should be doing. So what about <clears throat> the, the industry side of it? If someone's here at South By trying to break <clears throat> into the industry, who do they need to be talking to? What, what should they be doing? Well, how, how to open a door. That's, you know, um, I, I think you need to, if you want to do one thing in the business, you have to acquire 10 or 15 different skills. And instead of trying to become involved in music publishing start off by changing oil and making good cappuccino and learning a language and somehow you've got more of a chance of breaking into right. music publishing by doing that <laughs> oh my god this guy's here to have his oil changed he wants a cappuccino and he only speaks Japanese hello <laughs> that's how it happens right. um, random different ways to open a door you can't open a door by knocking on it mm-hmm. you have to tunnel your way underneath it you have to steal a hot air balloon, make sure there aren't any little children uh, <laughs> inside it, and parachute down on the other side of the door. Kick the door in, set the door on fire, mm-hmm. and arrive just in the nick of time with a fire extinguisher. Save the day, here's my resume, thank you. <laughs> you know, just you find different ways to open these doors. Mm-hmm. And eventually, you'll find out a few things. You'll find out the thing you thought you wanted to do is actually horrible and everybody <laughs> in it is horrible. You don't want anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. But along the way, you'll find out that you have a skill for making cappuccinos, uh, r- r- learning languages and right. building bridges for people and, and you want to do that. Right. I mean, look, look at me, I'm a drummer, uh, producer, songwriter, record label owner, studio owner. And now author as or, well. Author, mm-hmm. wrote a book, started teaching, love that. Mm-hmm. Um, PowerPoint ninja, you know, I'm just learning my life. I'm 50 years old, I'm still learning all these skills. Right. That's what it's about. So you're going to be doing a, a panel tomorrow called Welcome to the Music Business, You're Fucked. You're fucked, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, you're fucked. <laughs> every, every, anybody trying to do this, kids at school spending $80,000 on an education to get into it, bands trying to get into it, we're all fucked. But, you know, you ring that bell 
and I think it's, it's empowering. If you know that you're fucked, you're not. If you think that you're not, then you are. You're wandering around going, oh, I just got a radio promotions campaign for $10,000. You're fucked. I just hired this, you're fucked. Our agent says, you're fucked. <laughs> Can I, is there a manager? You're fucked. I'm trying to get a deal. You're fucked. You're fucked. <laughs> so you know it. I mean, as a drummer, I knew I was fucked because I play very heavy. So I had to spare everything. I knew I was fucked, so I dealt with it. You could prepare. Right. Um, and that's what my thing is about, looking at the different ways that you're totally fucked, sometimes by the business, sometimes by the world, oftentimes by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end, a few ways to avoid that because right. I can't just be like hey I'm Mr. Negative hello <laughs> it's horrible you know. so uh, we've <clears throat> got four days ahead of us of South by who are you really looking forward to see well uh, people lots of people outside of um, events mm -hmm. but but there are lots of events I'm really excited to see any and all of the bands from China Right. Uh, Snapline, a band I produced in Beijing, <clears throat> I signed them in 2006. They're here. I love them. Mm -hmm. um, I just produced their second album. I love them. I'm going to see One Eye Doll tonight mm -hmm. at nine o'clock somewhere. Right. <laughs> uh, Kimberly Freeman is inspirational. I love that band. Um, uh, who else am I going to see? I don't. I've got, I have a bunch of things uh, uh, planned. And it's crazy. Lots of meetings, some cups of coffee here and there. But then the other thing that South By is about is I just saw a girl from Norway. Like, right. oh my God, I just saw her in Norway two weeks ago. It's that. It's like, right. you know, being anywhere. Well, I, I was in my room last night complaining because my pay-per-view movies weren't working. So, but anywhere except your hotel room, <laughs> right. you know, be on the street, mm -hmm. absorbing it, yeah. you know. Um, so I need to listen to myself. So one final question for you. Uh, a reader sent in this question to examiner.com. Will Pigface be touring soon? Well, we just did an impromptu thing last night. Okay. I was at Momo's doing a 20 minute stand up. I, I look, here's 20 things. Um, and uh, Bradley from Chant, mm -hmm. Aust a, a musical treasure from here in Austin, right. has his like 50 drums on stage. So I said, well, can I jam with you? So we jammed together. And then Curse Mackey, who sings with Pigface, was here. So we did a thing. We did a 10 yep. minute thing. So whoever sent in that question missed. Should have been a moment last night. Yeah. All but right. we'll do, we're going to do something at some point. But I'm just all over the world with right. the book. It's crazy. Yep. Well, thank you, Martin. And thank, thank you, you for watching Studio SX.